My name is Judith Korchin, and I respectfully ask you to take your seats. As the president of the Miami-Dade and Brower chapter of the American Jewish Committee, it is an honor for me to speak with you today. At times like these, we must be engaged as Jews in the world and our own community. As Jews, we have a tradition that inspires us with hope and empowers individuals to take action during difficult times. I thank each of you who is here today for taking action to protect our Israel. Our next panel will explore the different responses targeted at specific segments of our community. They will foster a positive and fair approach towards Israel and its ongoing quest for peace with our neighbors. We will be learning from them. The moderator for our next panel is Martin J. Raffle. For more than 20 years, Martin Raffle has served as the Senior Vice President and Director of the Task Force on Israel, World Jewelry, and International Human Relations at the Jewish Council for Public Affairs. He is a primary resource on a broad range of Israel-related issues for, for 14 national organizations and 125 Jewish public affairs and community relations organizations. Most recently, Martin has taken on the very prominent and very important position as the director of the Jewish Federations of North America's Action Network, a, th a three-year project which is intended to educate and mobilize all of the federations across North America and the Jewish Community Relations Councils to play, just as we are today, here and now, an important role in responding to the assault on the, on the legitimacy of our Israel. I ask you now to join me in welcoming Mr. Martin Raffel. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I want to thank my colleagues here in Miami uh, uh, at the Federation and the CRC um, for this opportunity to come down here. Uh, they certainly deserve every uh, amount of credit and, and praise and appreciation we can give them. I also thank them as I was leaving my driveway in New Jersey looking at the 12 inches of snow and ice on my lawn, and I said, you know, thank you for that as well. So for that and for this incredibly important conference, I thank Jacob and Carol, my great colleagues here in Miami. Thank you. Um, so we've, we've been treated to some amazing um, uh, presentations so far this morning, and, and there's some really good stuff yet to come, uh, about the growing threats uh, from those who seek to delegitimize Israel as the nation state of the Jewish people. It's been explained more than once uh, so far this morning that we're not talking about criticizing Israeli policies. That's not what this is about. We're talking about, as Natan Sharansky discussed, really the three Ds, delegitimization, demonization, and imposing a standard of behavior on Israel that no other democracy is asked to adhere to. Uh, we know that there are hostile governments that manipulate the United Nations and other international fora to achieve their goal of isolating Israel. And they're trying to uh, separate Israel from the family of nations as apartheid South Africa, as was referred to before, was isolated before the end of apartheid. Now that is one major dimension of the challenge we are facing in the area of delegitimization. But no less important are the hateful initiatives attacking Israel 
in civil society, in non-governmental areas. And we also heard about some of that already. Uh, we heard about the college campuses. Uh, we're going to hear more about what's been taking place in churches throughout North America, uh, labor unions, among cultural elites in the performing arts area and in the business community. What kinds of anti-Israel initiatives are we encountering in those arenas? What are the strategic approaches and messages that have proven to be effective in responding to them? How can we build a big tent, an open tent, of Jews and non-Jews from across the political and religious spectrum whose voices will be most listened to in this discourse? And then what role can community leadership play? And how can rank and file activists throughout the community get productively and meaningfully involved? And uh, my colleague, William Daroff, who was uh, at the first panel, and the, uh, the person who just introduced me made reference to the Israel Action Network of the Jewish Federations of North America, which has been uh, uh, supported by the Miami Federation, and we are greatly appreciative of the support that we have always gotten from the Miami Jewish community. And we believe that uh, what happens here today is important, but c contrary to what they say about Las Vegas, what happens in this conference can't stay in this conference. For this to really be, for this to really be meaningful in the most, the highest uh, meaning of the term, uh, it has to have, it has to be translated on the ground, not to just today, but on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and the weeks and months going forward. And we are committed uh, with the Israel Action Network of the JFNA that is uh, being done in coordination with the JCPA, we are committed to working hand in hand with the Miami Jewish Federation and the CRC here to make sure that your community uh, responds in the way that I know that your community can respond. But to begin to lead us in the direction of some answers to these questions that I've posed, we've assembled a, a quite an extraordinary panel. Uh, this is a, also a very extraordinary panel uh, to follow up on the extraordinary panel that you've just heard. Um, we're going to uh, ask each of them to make some um, brief opening remarks, and then with my assistance, we hope to engage in conversation that I hope will be enlightening to you uh, and productive. I'm going to introduce them in the order in which they will speak, uh, and I apologize in advance. Each w is really entitled to a very lengthy introduction, but in the interest of time, and I know we're running a little bit late, I'm going to make it uh, very brief. Our first presenter is Daniel Pipes. He's a historian. And he, he's the director of the Middle East Forum and the Taub Distinguished Visiting Fellow at the Hoover Institution of Stanford University. He's a former official in the US Department of State, he has a distinguished career in academia and is the author of 12 books. These and other writings and publications have been translated into 33 languages. And I assume Daniel is not able to read his books in all those languages. Two presidents have appointed uh, uh, Mr. Pipes to the US government positions. Our second speaker uh, will be Rachel Fish. She is currently a doctoral candidate at Brandeis University in the field of Israel studies. She's also the mother of a seven-month-year-old, which is probably the most important thing of all. Her dissertation examines alternative concepts and frameworks for the creation of the State of Israel from pre-1948 to contemporary discourse. Rachel, I know, has a, an entrepreneurial spirit. She started an organization at the Harvard Divinity School called Students for an Ethical Divinity School, and she also produced the David Project film, Columbia Unbecoming, which focused on problems, uh, you recall, a number of years ago at that institution. And <laughs> last, but certainly not least, uh, the gentleman sitting right next to me was selected by Newsweek magazine as the most influential rabbi in the United States. He was described in a Washington Post profile 
as the quintessential religious lobbyist on Capitol Hill. Rabbi David Saperstein represents the Reform Jewish Movement to Congress and to the administration as the director of the Religious Action Center of Reform Judaism, lovingly referred to as the RAC. He has headed several national religious coalitions, serves on numerous civic boards in the Jewish and general communities. He was the first chair of the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom, and in 2009 was appointed by President Obama as a member of the first White House Council on Faith-Based and Neighborhood Partnerships. So with that, I would ask Daniel to be the first presenter. <laughs> 